Greetings in the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us begin our worship by offering our hearts to God in prayer. Risen Lord, though you have ascended into your Father's presence, you are closer than our very breath. And we ask you now to draw us into your presence. Be near to us, near to our praises, our prayers, our words, our songs. Be near to our thoughts, our tentative answers, our hidden doubts, our deepest affirmations. Be near to us, risen Lord. Amen. Debbie and Becky will now play a medley of My Country Tis of Thee and America the Beautiful. Let us offer our hearts to God once again in a time of prayer. We come remembering, Lord. We remember other places and other times. Times of laughter, times of sorrow, places of joy, places of despair. We remember promises, some made and some broken. We remember moments of grace and moments of sin. We bring all of these to you, asking you to break down the walls that divide us and to build up the faith that unites us. Forgive us our sin. Enable us to follow your example. Grant us strength and courage for your tasks. On this Memorial Day weekend, Please fill our hearts with gratitude for those who have given their lives for all of us in the service of this nation. May we honor their sacrifice. May we remember their example of faithfulness and duty as we strive every day to serve others before ourselves. 
and to do our best to make this nation a stronger and better union. Help your church to be strong and faithful. Lead us in mission and guide us in the way of discipleship. Grant us wisdom as we make decisions. Grant us courage as we persevere in times of uncertainty. Grant us strength when we grow weary. Please answer the deep desires of our hearts as we worship you. Show us the needs of the communities in which we live and empower us to respond to every need. Make us into your people. Gentle and nurturing God, we pray for those who are hurting, those who struggle with illness, those who know the pain of death, those who feel trapped under the weight of addiction or depression, those who struggle just to find the place where they belong. We pray for those infected by coronavirus, for those at risk of infection, for healthcare workers, first responders, researchers. We pray for wisdom to know when it is right to loosen restrictions, to get out and about more in the world around us. We pray for those we know and for those we do not know. We pray for those who suffer hunger, war, injustice, and economic hardship. May your hand be felt, may your light illuminate every dark corner, and may this world be reshaped into a more holy form. We thank you and praise you for the beautiful rains that you send and for the life which the rains nourish, while we also pray for those who suffer from too much rain and from other natural disasters. May we all be changed by your power, that having experienced forgiveness, we might become committed, determined, joyful, ready to share the hope and the promise of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. A reading from the first 11 verses of the 17th chapter of the Gospel according to John. Here, Jesus asks his Father that his glory may be fully known in and through his Son. And Jesus prays for his disciples, through whom this glory now shines. After Jesus finished saying this, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Give glory to your Son, so that the Son may give glory to you. For you gave him authority over all people, so that he might give eternal life to all those you gave him. And eternal life means to know you, the only true God, and to know Jesus Christ, whom you sent. I have shown your glory on earth. I have finished the work you gave me to do. Father, give me glory in your presence now, the same glory I had with you before the world was made. I have made you known to those you gave me out of this world. They belonged to you, and you gave them to me. They have obeyed your word, and now they know that everything you gave me comes from you. 
I gave them the message that you gave me, and they received it. They know that it is true that I came from you, and they believe that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those you gave me, for they belong to you. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and my glory is shown through them. And now I am coming to you. I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. Holy Father, keep them safe by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one just as you and I are one. Amen. Debbie and Becky will now play Eternal Father, Strong to Save. Board an airplane one day, everything is going just fine when a passenger happens to notice smoke coming out of one of the engines. The passenger is looking out the window and sees smoke that's not supposed to be there and he gets kind of panicky. But the pilot announces, I'm sorry to inform you ladies and gentlemen that one of our engines has failed. But don't you worry, because we've got three more. All this means is there's going to be a slight delay in our arrival time. And just to put your minds at ease, I want you to know we have four ministers on board. So with all of these holy folks here among us, I don't think it's likely that anything bad could possibly happen to us. Well, some witty fella at the back of the plane then pipes up, three engines and four ministers? I'd feel a whole lot better if we had four engines and three ministers. When faced with a crisis, different people react in different ways. Just look at the reactions to the pandemic. Some people on that airplane took a lot of comfort, I, I'm sure, knowing that there were four godly individuals praying for them. While other folks probably didn't have much faith at all that prayer could really make a difference when their lives are on the line. When we overhear Jesus praying in the Gospel according to John, with Jesus' own earthly life hanging in the balance. Our Lord is totally confident that his heavenly Father hears and will answer his prayer. First of all, Jesus prays that God will glorify him, that God will honor him through what is about to happen. That is, Jesus prays that God will be revealed through the suffering and the death and the resurrection that Jesus is about to experience. 
Jesus also prays that his disciples will be protected and given eternal life. These days, people outside the church try to gain something that approximates eternal life with success or possessions or power, while inside the church we focus on achieving a reward in heaven after we die. But all of this largely ignores John's point in the gospel about what eternal life really means. Jesus prays, Father, the hour has come. Give glory to your Son, so that the Son may give glory to you. For you gave him authority over all mankind, so that he might give eternal life to those you gave him. And eternal life means to know you, the only true God, and to know Jesus Christ, whom you sent. Do you hear what Jesus is saying? Contrary to what we traditionally believe, eternal life is not defined by the length of our existence. Rather, eternal life is defined by knowing God, by knowing Christ. We see eternal life as a condition, while Christ sees eternal life as a relationship. And you know what that means. It means we don't have to wait to receive eternal life. We can have eternal life here, now, as we come to know God through God's Son. A deep and developing relationship with God does not end even if our earthly life does end. A relationship with God is a relationship that transcends the limitations of earthly life. The heavenly life that we look forward to in the future is but another step forward in the relationship we have with God that begins now. Now, more than a few of us may be thinking, hey, on the surface, yeah, that sounds good. But in practice, knowing God is not as easy as it sounds. We've done all of the stuff we're supposed to do. We've gone to Sunday school and to church. We have prayed. We have read the Bible. But still, after all of that, we really cannot say with any conviction that we consistently see God or hear God. Much of the time, we don't feel so different from people who haven't done all of that stuff. Our lives look pretty much the same as everybody else's. It's still hard to make the right choices and do the right things. Our prayers don't seem to make that much difference. We still hurt. We still have a hard time getting along with people. People we love still die. We're still afraid. We're just not sure when all is said and done that we really know God at all, Christians so often say. So what's all this talk about eternal life being a relationship? Let us hang on to our hope that eternal life is completely separate and completely different from this life that we know on earth. Let us go on believing that eternal life comes after this earthly life. Let us at least have something to look forward to when all of this is over. 
But to think that way is to see eternal life as something that we achieve, something that we work toward, instead of eternal life being a gift from God, a gift we receive as God touches our heart. And when God touches your heart, my goodness, there's no telling what might happen. You might feel compassion for someone that you never particularly cared about before. You may feel a peace that you think should not be there. A peace that makes no sense given the mess that your life is in. Maybe you'll go out of your way to be helpful. You might, you might even find yourself doing things that at one time you promised yourself you would never do, like getting more involved in the church or even becoming a Sunday school or church school teacher or worship leader or church officer or parish forbid pastor. Jesus also prayed that his disciples would be united, that you and I would be united. Holy Father, he prays, keep them safe by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as you and I are one. The thing is, too often we think that all Christians should think alike and all Christians should act alike. But that is confusing unity with uniformity. The unity that Jesus prays for is that you and I will be one just as the Son of God and His Father are one. And remember that even though the Father and the Son are united, they are still distinct from one another, which suggests we who believe are to be united in heart, united in purpose, while still allowing for diversity. Just before the risen Christ ascended into heaven. He told his disciples in the first chapter of Acts, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will be filled with power and you will be witnesses for me in Jerusalem, in all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. The power the Holy Spirit gives to us, quite simply, is the power of love. Those disciples who followed Jesus in the beginning, <laughs> they were not perfect by a long shot. They still made mistakes. They messed up. But because they knew God, because they knew Christ, because they were filled with the very love of God, Everything, nevertheless, was changed. Their lives were changed to begin with. And then the whole world was changed through them. So the answer to this prayer of Jesus is not what we may expect. Eternal life, Jesus says, is not a condition, but a relationship. It means to know God. Jesus is glorified. God is revealed, not just through Jesus' resurrection and his ascension into heaven, but especially through Jesus' suffering and death. For his sacrifice shows the power and the depth of God's love. And when you and I and all Christians are united, that doesn't mean 
we think alike. It doesn't mean we act alike. It means that God binds our hearts together with one another and with God. This relationship, Jesus says, this connection is what eternal life means. The only way for us to experience the answer to our Lord's Prayer is to know God more deeply. Have faith. God is with you. Even if you don't see God, even if you don't hear God, let God touch your heart. Let God startle you even. Let God lead you outward into a world that is as starved for love as you are. Let God have your heart now. Because there's no time like the present. Let us pray. Living God, from many circumstances and from many places, unite our hearts. Unite us in purpose. Unite us in the desire to bring people together and never to drive them apart. Unite us in the power of love and immerse us in the only life which is abundant and eternal. The life we know here and now when you live in us and when we live in you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us enter this week in the assurance that God is not concealed from us, but that God is revealed among us. Let us glimpse the face of Christ in one another. Let us celebrate the Holy Spirit who works among us. Let us give glory to God, our Creator, today and every day. Amen.